Okay, that's we're, we're doing that. We are so doing that. Oh my goodness, this is the most brutal field I've ever seen. Right, so this is an attack trigger. It gets the non-legends back. Get a combat. So, go into there. Go into there. Go into there. <laughs> Mono black vampires, how crazy. We're going to draw seven cards. We basically just made our own grizzle brand here. Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new episode. Today's episode is a little bit sad because um, essentially a, a few days ago one of my long time viewers uh, he told me on my channel that uh, sadly his brother had passed away and it yeah it just really kind of upset me because obviously you know it's not nice to hear but he said that um, they used to watch my videos together and I thought I was quite honoured really that uh, my my videos would be that entertaining to be honest because sometimes I don't really know how uh, meaningful something like this might be to someone if whether you're lonely or you're bored or anything like that um, but yeah, the user I'm just going to get the name and the, the user was called uh, Derek Rexman 3824 and his gamer tag is Chobby Hellkite but this is dedicated to his brother who passed away and his name was Distorted Reality. That was his name on Arena. So if you've seen those um, before. But yeah, apparently Distorted Reality's favourite deck was Sorin Imperious Bloodlord. So I thought in, on, in order to honour um, his passing, essentially, I thought I'd make just a, a video just to say thank you to, to you and your brother. So yeah, thank you very much for watching my videos. Um... Derek, I presume your name is Derek, but I hope this video um, serves a purpose, maybe just a, a memory for you to come back to if you're feeling um, sad or lonely, I suppose. But yeah, I don't know, it's it's a difficult one. But yeah, my heart goes out to you and your family for, for your loss, essentially. But yes, this video will be dedicated to him. It's a Sorin Imperious Bloodlord build, so I tried to keep it as thematic as possible. So essentially, it's a vampire tribal build. And it has all the cool vampire stuff that you'd expect to see. You've got... Um, so essentially his minus three is probably the, the spiciest ability here. Because you, you can put a vampire card into play from your hand. And that's why you want to have some expensive vampires. I don't have all the expensive rares and mythic vampires. Because I basically used as much as I could. But I still think I've got a good selection. So you've got like Drana, which you can pop down on battlefields early as turn three. Champion of Dusk is a classic. The people used to do this in standard modern as well. And you've got a new one from Phyrexia, Kinzo of the Bleak Coven, which is really cool. Whenever another non-token creature dies, you may pay two and exile it if you do create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a 1-1 one, one and that's toxic. So it hits on a different angle. Really cool card there. You've got Knight of the Ebon Legion, which is an absolute all-star fantastic card. Does so many things, you know, just early drops because his plus one you can tick up to put a plus one counter on the creature that's a vampire and then it gets death touch and lifelink this goes up really quick and it's a, it's a surprising deck because it can hit on multiple tangents it's not only a really good aggro build but it's quite good against control essentially because it's got a lightning bolt on a stick you can plus one to sack a vampire and if you do it deals three damage to any target and you gain three it's really really quite powerful ability um, especially late game when your opponent has little life and you might be struggling to attack. So it's deceptive. I really like the design of this guy. He doesn't have a uh, conventional ultimate, and this is the kind of planeswalkers I prefer because I think ultimates sway the game too far in your favour. It's too easy to abuse, and it's good to have something a bit more steady like this. Um, because it's tribal, it's forgivably powerful because you need to have vampires. But yeah, I think they did a good job designing this. It's probably the most Sorin of Sorins you could have basically created but yeah if you want to check out the deck list it'll be in the description below um yeah don't forget to like and sub sub if you appreciate seeing the content here and once again um i'm really sorry for your loss um derek i hope you enjoy this video and i hope other people do as well um so yeah let's get into the gameplay we go first against joda Damn, this is a sick hand. We can go for turn one Sorin if we want to. Should we do that for the lols? 
Turn one Sorin and a fourth wall. How's that? How'd you like them apples? Okay, but it's just going to hold priority for the rest of the time. And let's draw a card. Damn, a 3-4 flying death touch lifelink next turn. <laughs> this is crazy! This is an actual crazy goodness. And we can even go for invoke despair pretty soon as well. Wow. Four or five lifelink. Flying. Let's just hope they don't have any removal. If they do, they do. Not much we can do. With the Invoke Despair is going to be great, though. It's going to be able to help us get some cards back. They haven't quit, so they should have removal, right? That's the logic. There's a lot of removal in five colours. Let's put the counter on. I think we attack first, and then we'll go for the Thoughtseize after. Because if they've got removal, they've got removal. Not much we can do about that. They're hesitating. I guess if they're going to do it anyway, we might as well just see the rest of their hand, right? They could have a counter spell. Could be a Dovin's Veto. Herd Migration. Herd Migration? This is not something you see very often. Search for a basic, reveal it, put in your hand, then gain three. Bloody hell, for two mana. For two mana. It's pretty good. And, oh my god. Oh my goodness. Three, four, five, six. Let's get rid of the Dark Ritual. I mean, it's a weird one to hit, but these, they're so expensive, the rest of those. Okay. We've got to race them. Damn, their hand is absolutely stacked. I, I feel pretty safe, though. They can't cause anything until turn seven, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Or they're saying that if they do go for the Joda, obviously they can do these on turn five. Okay, so we're going to see those cards come down pretty soon. Let's put a counter on here. This Henrique is doing a lot of work. A lot of work. We even have the Lock Thwain to recuperate. Um, three, four, five. We might as well even pay we can even pay for the boost because we can still go for the blood craze paladin if we need to Ten. so we essentially have lethal on board and there's not much they can do about it in the hand at least damn so many expensive cards Yep, so they don't know we have the Invoke to spare, but there we go. Absolute brutalization there. Fantastic. And they're a good sport. They let us have the final blow. Wow, what a game. <laughs> Crazy. I think it's hers. We're the Gitrog monster. Okay. So, I'll risk it because we've got the Arena and Invoke Despair, two of the best black cards in the format. you got to keep those goodies when you can. Kill the Nissa here. So, the Wayfinder should get them a land or two from the top. That means the next time they can go for the Druid class. Not too bothered about that being alive, though, so we'll probably just go for... Guardian Idol here. Yeah, it's funny because as I said in the deck tech, this is a vampire build, but it can act more like a controlly build as well. Fatal push. Oof. Cobra wants to probably get killed. So we're going to probably fatal push it next turn. Otherwise, they're going to have five mana. Blood Artist. Yeah, so we'll go Arena, fatal push. Wow. It's Sometimes it's like playing the greatest hits of magic. It's fantastic. Invoke Despair is good as well, because this can make them sack the enchantment. Although not threatening yet, it can create a creature, which its power and toughness does become pretty huge. Sator Wayfinder. 
Exiling our graveyard. Yeah. Little thing. Witch's Vengeance and a Herald's Horn. Let's go for those. Naming vampires. This might be good for just recouping some things. Making a vampire cost one less is fantastic as well. Blood Art is being one mana. It makes it so crazily good. <clears throat> Especially when you have Invoke Despair and Witch's Vengeance to take care of the problematic things. Yitrog Monster. Swinging in for one. So, probably want to go for the Vengeance first to get rid of the Sator Wayfinder. Reveal. Oh, lovely. So we get another Vampire to hand. Mind Spike. Okay, so how much mana do we have? Five, six. So I think... Oh, man, this is such a weird play. Four, five, six, seven, four, five, six. I can't do what I want. I can't just kill the Wayfinder with the Sorin. I guess we'll go for the Scavenger because it's two mana, right? Then we've got four up. We could do that. We're not wasting the Witch's Vengeance. Feels a lot, though. But what other small creatures are they going to do, you know? Yeah. Creatures of the Chosen type. So we go for Satyrs. What a weird... Weird thing to do. But yeah, that's the thing. If they've got Sacrifice things, then it means that our Invoke Despair is just not going to be very good. And apparently they didn't have any non creature non land cards, which is kind of scary. If they swing, I'm definitely going to block, because if we trade here, it means that the Invoke Despair can definitely hit something else. Okay, as if they didn't have a land drop. That's ludicrous. Uh, annoyingly, though, they've got yet more sack fodder. Which is driving me nuts. They just keep playing incidental creatures that happen to get in the way. Oh my god, casualties in the graveyard. Okay, that's good. Good place for the casualties to be. Another vamp. Oh baby. Okay, this arena is proven to be very good. Right, let's go for the paladin here. Sorin. Take out the bl the the flipping spring bloom druid Thank you for goodness gracious me the amount of residual work we have to do here is just uh, a lot but and we technically have two blockers because we can also block with the guardian idol if anything goes wrong with the nighthawk scavenger can we just get a turn where they don't play a 1-1 one -one that just sits there Otherwise, the despair just does not get any good hits. <clears throat> or am I cursed to face incidental value creatures? Oh my goodness. Another. To be fair. To be fair, this is very good. So I don't mind actually killing this. But we've got the Sorin to hopefully take care of that. Also, the Drana can bring us creatures back as well. Which is going to be useful if this ever gets to hit. Level three, so they get a creature. Goodness me. Seven, seven. <laughs> uh. Yes, I suppose we'll block it. Yeah, that's a shame. That is a shame. I think the Ramming Up Excavator is actually more problematic than Gitrock Monster. I could have just blocked with Guardian Idol there, actually. Exile Graveyard. Fantastic. So now our Drana's completely useless. That was weirdly clutch. Give us a card. Another Vampire. Of course, it's a Reanimator one as well. Ooh, okay. You know what? How do you like it? This is an incredible hit. We can kill their fields, kill a card from the hand, and exile the graveyard. Super good. Right, vengeance is ours. I think we're on the road to being pretty safe here now. Take out the whole field. 
train them for one. Put a vampire into play. I think we'll go for the Sanctum Seeker first because the Drana is a good way to recover our field and also the Null Priest of Oblivion. So let's see how they react. Green Black obviously has access to so many things. I'm just happy to see this SOB in the graveyard. You all know how much I hate this. Cavalier of Thorns. Interesting timing. Because they know we have an exile effect literally on field. So. The six toughness is going to be a bit of a bugger though. I just can't believe we've hit vampires every turn with this Herald Sword. It's crazy. It's basically drawing three a turn. And a Solemn as well. They've got so many lands considering they've sacked two with the Getrog. Come on. Four for four. Uh, okay, so that's not a vampire, but it's helpful. Inquisition. Elspeth's Nightmare as well. You know what? That's actually a really good hit. Tutor. What more could I ask for? Five, six. Nothing to reanimate. They've got no kill spells their side. They do have the Cultivator Colossus though, which is kind of scary. Let's make our creatures like ridiculously big here. Okay, four, five, 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 six, six, six. So if we put a counter on the Drana, she can safely block the Cavalier. And then we can Inquisition away the Braids as well. I am a bit scared of the Colossus. Um, but what can I say? Nothing we can really do about that here. So they're going to get the world breaker back, but oh no, actually, they need to use colorless mana, which they currently don't have. All right, so Colossus, put a land, draw a card. How many times can? Okay, so just one off hit. Fair enough. Wow, we got away with murder there. I felt like they were going to attack with the Cavalier. But Jukabog, that's good as well. Oh my goodness, okay. We are we are literally getting god draws this game. We're not safe by any means, but... Okay, let's draw four cards. Casual four cards here. Pretty damn good. Eventually, we're just going to be able to win with the Sanctum Seeker as well. Because whenever we attack the Vampire, each opponent loses one and we gain one. Um, Death Touch is fantastic as well. Okay, and then we can start making blood with the Voldarian Estate too. Is there anything we want to kill here? Now I think we just want to strengthen our guys. This has got Trample. Uh, six Six can already survive that. So let's make that survive that as well. Now nah, let's just go for another creature, I think. We can, we don't need uh, blood yet. And if we attack, we get something back. But we've got nothing dead. So that can be the backup plan. If we do some double triple blocks on this, then the Drana can return things back and then start maybe doming them for three. That's good synergy as well. Sorin, tick up, bolt them, Drana attack, get the vampire to the battlefield back. Vraska, she can kill a lot of things here. Maybe the arena or the Herald's Horn. Or maybe they draw a card. Lucky you. They could just draw a card. Sacrifice a permanent to draw a card. Pain is weakness, leaving the body. That actually weakens the Ashire and the Colossus, weirdly, by doing that. I'm very tempted to just Alpha Strike here because the Sanctum Seeker would drain for X. And then the Blood Artist will drain for X as well. Because if our stuff gets blocked. Let's see. Let's just have a gander first. Okie dokie. 
thought sees. So the reach. Let's see. We've got some pretty decent attacks. Death touch. We could attack with the death touches. Oh my god, I just realised. If we sack the Champion of Dusk and then attack with Drana, they have to give us a champion back. Oh my god. Okay, that's we're, we're doing that. We are so doing that. Oh my goodness, this is the most brutal field I've ever seen. Right, so this is an attack trigger. It gets the non-legends back. You get a combat. <clears throat> so, go into there. Go into there. Go into there. <laughs> Mono black vampires, how crazy. We're going to draw seven cards. We basically just made our own grizzle brand here. So they can only block with the Cavalier, and they can only get back the Solemn. And I, I mean, if they do get back the Solemn, you know. As if they're actually... Are they actually going to put that on top? No. Thought as much. I think we will get rid of the Graveyard then. Just to get rid of that Cavalier forever. And we've got some kill spells. I think we'll kill the Ashire because that's just giving them extra mana here. Go for a vampire. And let's just see what's in the hand just out of curiosity. It was a conduit of worlds. Okay. I'm actually very glad I got rid of that now. Well, they're saying that we've exiled their graveyard twice, so I don't think there's much they can do here. It's going to be very, very tricky for them, especially when you consider we have a Grizzle Brand, which is Drana and Champion of Dusk. It actually draws us more cards each turn than I thought. If they ever get to two life, we also have the Sign in Blood. I think we actually just win next turn. I think we Alpha. And, uh... They've tapped out completely as well. Foundry Groundbreaker. Mistress Foundry. Yeah, we had so many different outs there. Fantastic. What a good game. Wouldn't be a video without a first sliver opponent, would it now? Let's mulligan this hand. Okay, this is... Uh, it's okay. The second Sorin might be helpful. Turn three, we can get two vampires out altogether. Let's see how we get on then. Is it going to be a true Slivers build or not? Is it fake or is it real? My god, time warp. Uh, I think we actually get out of time warp, sadly. I don't want them to get there, but they've got so much ramp that it's going to be inevitable that they get there. It's just the way it is. We don't see any removal though. So we might be getting away with playing what the heck we want. Let's see, unless they drew maybe a counter spell in one of those. Not the greatest uh, vampire to deploy of all time, but it's essentially a free planeswalker on top of a creature, or vice versa. Yeah, three three mana. That makes three mana thing. Can't complain, to be honest. Four mana. They've got so many mystery cards in their hand now. Sliver. So they're going to get the Sliver next turn, that's for sure. Let's put a counter on this one, because it's got flying. And let's just hope they don't have haste here. Haste would be very annoying. Um. Okay, let's just make another blocker, just in case they get haste. They always get haste with the Sliver guy. Okay. And if it's not haste, it's going to be something else ridiculous. Something green. Put two lands into play from the top. Okay, we can live with that. 
Oh, they only hit one. That's pretty crazy that they only found one in the top seven, I have to say. So, let's draw a card. Crippling Fear. It's a shame we have to reveal that. Minus three and three. That's not enough to kill their thing. Okay, let's put Dukabog. Let's think about this. So we've got the Pyre of Heroes, which we can use to get a creature which is stronger. Hmm. Interesting. Am I going to put too many eggs in this basket here? Right, let's just pump up this flyer. Swing in. I don't care if they kill our planeswalkers. I want to deal as much damage as possible. Death touch. And if they block here, it means they've got a board wipe. No, that means they don't have a board wipe. Down to five. Pyre of Heroes. Let's eat up the Aetherborn here. We've got lethal in the air here. What can we get? Oh, okay. So... Hmm, interesting. I feel like... We'll go for the Callous Blood Mage to draw a card. So the... <laughs> That's funny, we got that. So basically they have to have a board wipe or they die, really. Or they get a free spell with a fight rigging anyway, so we get to see what they do. Get here. So hideaway five means look at the top five. Exile one underneath this. And then on combat, put a counter to something. And then if they have power seven greater, they get to play the card for free. It's scary because it's three mana, but it can be the sky's the limit. You know, it could be omniscience, and you know. Please don't be something like ruinous ultimate final parting. So they're going to get a hand. A card to hand and a card to the graveyard. Five mana open, which means it's board wipe territory. We'll see what they do. We can actually get the Falcon Earth Forebear back from the graveyard by sacrificing two blood tokens, which we do actually have. I wish it was different. I wish it was like by discarding a card. <clears throat> or yeah, I guess it's that's just the flavour there, right? That's just the flavour. Are they gonna get casualties of war? Casualties of war would be fantastic, but they I think they've already played a mana. We'll see. Actually saying that, we can actually discard a card with the crippling fear, so uh, uh, with the blood token, so discarding crippling fear because this is not going to be very good, and they just lose the game. Oh, I wonder what. Surely they were, they would have had a card to kill a flyer, right? Because they could tutor for any card, search for one card to kill the flyer, then they could have just blocked on the floor because they would have only taken. Oh no, because they would have taken two flying, and then we could have sacked a vampire to deal three to the face. Yeah, I guess they needed two kill spells there. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Denik. Pious Apprentice. Don't see this one very often. Cars and graveyards can't be the target spells or abilities, so it's anti-graveyard technology. We do actually have the answer for him with the with the fatal push, so we can definitely get rid of him here. Not that it's that scary. I'm more scared of what's in the deck. Counter spell? Um, I wonder if they know how Pact Negation works. <laughs> okay, Locust Guard and... Uh, ooh, maybe I shouldn't have kept this hand. We'll, we'll see how this goes. We'll see how this goes. Maybe this will draw us a decent card here. Not every hand is going to be good. Sometimes it's nice just to keep whatever hand you see because it's just more of a challenge that way, isn't it? To be honest. Signet, we might be able to resolve a Sorin then. My voice went weird there, so we won't be able to resolve a Sorin there. Oh, put a counter on Dust Legion Zealot. I want to know really how many of my viewers are actually from the UK because looking at the stats, 
Seems like barely any. I get more views from uh, Americans, Italians, Germans. Where's all my Where's all my Brits at? Huh? Where's all the Brits at? Sad times. Do we get the Do we get for the Vanquishers banner without any Without any vampires to cast after? This is a weird play I'm doing here. Okay. Three, four, five. So they can actually go for the Locust Guard here. But they're not going to get do that. They are not going to do that. This is... Oh, we actually got a vampire. Enters the battlefield. Okay, we get to draw a card, I suppose. Probably should have kept the Phyrexian Tower up there. Are they going to blow this up? Rude. Sublime Epiphany. Oh my god. That's really brutal. That's actually brutal. I want to see what you got in your hand, you son of a bitch. Oh, River's Rebuke. Hard. You're so hard with your River's Rebuke. I mean, I use these cards. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just fighting, fighting, talking it. Right, one mana open. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna suck on this bonus hunger, mate. Get rid of your locust, locust god. Oh, it goes back to that hand as well. That's gonna be so annoying. Okay, goodness me. Maybe we just put a vampire into play here. Yeah, kind of sucky. If this fam if this midnight clock goes off with the uh, locust god, we just die. Yeah, I d I've just consigned myself to defeat here. There's nothing we can really do against something that continuously comes back over and over again. Uh, feed the swarm. We've got another answer, I suppose. Yeah, let's kill it. Lose some things. I guess if we can apply some momentum, we can pressure them a bit. But once they can start playing locust god and other spells as well. It's not going to be very good. Do they want to put it into that? Well, did they choose the right thing? I've seen some people make a mistake here, putting the commands in, and it goes away for forever. Where, 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 where are you putting the next god, bro? Come on, Chirishishis. Chirishikes. Chirishikes. That's a terrible game attack. Try shake. Try... Chris Hikes. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Chris Hikes. Why was I reading that as Shrey Shrikes? Timeout used, because uh, Chris Hikes here uh, doesn't want to put Locust Guards into the... I don't know. Why did that take so long, bro? I'm just playing to lose. This is going to be to lose. Play to lose, bro. Four toughness. Why is it to be four toughness? Be interesting if Soren said deal damage equal to the sacrificed vampire's power, and you gain that much life. Think how flavorful that would be. Obviously, the only annoying side would be that. I guess it makes it a bit weaker, but that's just as well. Come on. Come on. Bran. Bran. Menace lifelink. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Vampire. Let's put another counter on this guy. So, yeah, the other scary thing is that the locusts get um, haste. That is a son of a bitch move. Son of a bitch! <laughs> oh, I don't even care anymore. The locust god's gonna get like 70,000 locusts. Come on then, kill me. Stop trying to hit me and hit me. So whilst I'm waiting to die, let's do some impersonations or impressions. We'll go where- oh, curiosity, that's sick. Do you want to know how I got these scars? Or we can go for- I was born in the dark. 
Batman. Cool man. They're gonna have loads of locusts. Sweet. Watch their erection grow as they defeat me. Do you know what's worse than um, facing a deck that has complete domination over you? It's like, you know when you play a shooter and your team's already losing? I see this a lot in Overwatch 2. I play Overwatch 2 quite a lot. And then they teabag you. But the, the idea is that teabagging is like, it's like a revenge thing, yeah? But why do it if your team's already winning? Like, I kind of get it if you kill someone that's killed you like 10 times in a row or it's like bitch talk to you, whatever. But to do it to a, a team that's already losing is like, okay, well done. Yeah, it's like this game here. Like we didn't really have a chance versus Locust, Locust God just because, you know, they've got a lot of counter spells and so on and so forth. But yeah, they still had to be mean. The meanies. We could go for Vran. Oh, I was doing impressions. Uh, if you like impressions, by the way, go to my TikTok. My link is below. And I've got a video where I do all the Overwatch characters' voices. If you don't click on that tic tac tic tic tac Oh, my God. Speaking of tic tacs, tic tacs are sweet in England. They're like little mints. Um, I don't know if you can get them in America, but uh, someone at work the other day, he bought a box of 250, right? And I laughed my head off. It was empty. And I said, wow, you ate those really quick. And he said, yeah, he, um, he ate them in the morning. And he said, he basically ate 250 sweets in less than an hour. I was like, what the hell? Yeah, it's quite funny. Funny to me anyway. You probably were like, well, that's not funny, Josh. Well, why are you here then? Huh? Why are you watching this? This is... This is, this is resolve. Does this resolve? Oh, counterspell. Oh, counterspell. Oh... Okay, we just die, don't we? Yeah, so this is the least coherent I think I've ever been. Um, yeah, I think we just die. I don't really care. Sometimes it's fun just to have a funny video. And if you don't think it's funny, then you can donate to my channel and help me get comedy, comedy classes. So if you don't laugh at any of my jokes, don't think this is funny, donate below in the link and help me get funnier by paying for acting classes and comedy classes. So it's up to you. It's your fault. It's actually your fault. If you don't find my videos funny, you, it's your fault because you're not paying for me to be funny. So if you've got any complaints about me not being funny, who who is to blame? You're the one to blame, you know? You are the reason you're not enjoying this video. And if you're still watching, then I don't know what to say. There's just no hope left. If you're still watching, yeah, donate. Donate, basically. Did you know that you can help my channel by watching another one of my videos? Go ahead. You know you want to.